I'll put my hand up when it goes live. I'm already recording. Okay, hey. Hi there, friends. Good to see you. Welcome, everyone, to Big Cove Presbyterian Church Worship Service. You just had our prelude by Brandon Niska, and I'm sure it was lovely. And here we are now at our home in, in, um, in Owens Crossroads, Alabama, just trying to enjoy the beautiful scenery and to be able and be out with the Lord in nature. And Ralph is here with me, and he's going to be playing some music as well. And Arnie's in the background. He's taping this in case you miss it. I wonder how it's been for everyone lately. I see Amy coming on. Good to see you, Amy. Hey, Kevin. Nice to see you. So glad you're here at worship today. Love seeing friendly faces. And as we just continue to just greet each other and say hello, I see Sandra. Hello, Sandra. I bet you Jeff's with you, too. Hey, Cheryl. Good to see you. So nice to see our church family out there. And sometimes we even see faces that we're not familiar with, and we're just going to say a howdy. And so happy that everyone's with us today. It can be a challenge living in today's world right now, can it? Hey, Pam, because of all the changes. We'll be talking a little bit about changes today. And also, hey, Tenet, hi, Diane, so good to see you both. And did you notice that your friends are all in today? Hey, Kay, good to see you. Isn't it wonderful to be able to greet each other in Christ as we come into a time of worship? God is with us everywhere, everyone. God is with us in the sky and in the sun and in the beautiful aftermath of our storm last night. Who was kept awake by the storm? Mm. Everybody wave who was kept awake by the storm. I sure was. I bet you many of you were. I kept waiting for that tornado and hail. I'm so glad it didn't hit here. But it was pretty sad about the, the people that were affected by that. So we're going to make sure we pray for them today. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. Welcome to the church family. We're all just worshiping today. Kay Hank says, amen, love you everyone. Isn't that wonderful that she shares that with us today? I hope you enjoyed Brandon's um, beautiful prelude for us today. And Diane, I hope that you enjoyed that as well. How are you, Diane? Good to see you. I've got your husband over here filming, just in case you wondered where he was, okay? How, what a wonderful day and the, the glory of the Lord. So as we continue to just greet each other for a few minutes, I want us to just reflect on how wonderful it is that even though we are separated by the miles, that we can still be together in worship time. It's a miracle almost, isn't it? Think of 50 to 100 years ago. We weren't able to do this at all if there was a pandemic of any kind. We'd be really, really isolated. So I'm going to be thankful today that there is a way that we can truly still be together. And Kevin saying thanks and hello everyone, which is terrific. And Pam and Todd, Ta, Ta, there you are. Good to have you join in. So wonderful to see you as well. And Julie, hey Julie, good to have you part of the family. I bet you Clay's sitting there with you as well. How wonderful that everyone can join together. We just take a few minutes to have some announcement time before we do worship. And one of the announcements I want to make is that notice the schedule's changing just a little bit for our story times. Uh, Julie has announced that and we'll be sending out a note about that. If you haven't seen it, it's on the Facebook page about the times. So pay attention. Hey Renee, hey there, hope David's with you. And so just notice the time changes a little bit on that. And we're going to keep trying this worship. And I wanted you to know, everyone, if the worship fades out and stops for some reason on this live feed, that's okay. Because Arnie's taping it. It'll go on our YouTube and our webpage pretty soon. Okay? So you don't have to worry about missing it. Kathy says hello to everybody. She's saying, hey, I miss you all. And she's able to tune in as well. Don, if you're there, we say hi to you as well. So remember... If this cuts out, that's okay. We're going to be able to film it and come back a little bit later. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to sing a little song. And, we're, and if you know the words and the tune, just join in uh, to sing it. It's surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you. 
tune in and he, she says, hi Granny Kim and Papa. And that is Alex, our granddaughter. So good to see you, Alex. Nice to have you here with us today. So let us pray, everyone. God, we thank you so much for the time that we are allowed to be together in such a strange way, O oh God. We thank you for technology, O oh Lord. We thank you for your universe. We thank you for all the beautiful things you give us every day in the crisis. You give us air to breathe. You give us flowers. You give us beautiful birds to hear, even the insects, O oh God, that are industriously doing their thing. We thank you for everything you give us. Please open our hearts and minds to this worship today. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to read a story today that some of you might know. It's really kind of a controversial one. It's a little odd, I think. It's about Lazarus. So um, let's see what we can learn about Lazarus. It's John 11, 1 to 45. It's called the death of Lazarus. Let's listen together to the scripture. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus, he was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you and you're going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. All his disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. Well, they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, she was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Now, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stove was, stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? They took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. 
I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews there had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, and therefore they believed in him. The word of God for everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to sing another song to reflect on the scripture. shelves in those stores that says take me as is like a bookcase with a scratch on the side or a refrigerator that had a small dent you get it pretty cheap right or a stuffed toy that had an eye missing I used to look for those stuffies because I felt sorry for them as is we're living in a time that is as is we're shifting our normal to lots of new normal and that's some of what we're hearing in the Lazarus story today so let's dig into the scripture a bit, shall we? The very first line tells us a lot. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. The community you see that was listening to the writings in the book of John were aware of the other gospels and must have read them. How do we know that? Well, the story about Mary anointing Jesus with oil and wiping it with her hair comes after the Lazarus story in John. So we know that the people were familiar with the Gospels and had to read them or have heard them. And the focus of this story right away is not on Lazarus at all, or on Jesus right away, but on Mary and Martha. Right up front, we realize they have a very intimate relationship and friendship with Jesus. Look at the message that comes to Jesus. The one you loved is sick relationship. Most of what we read in this text has to do with relationship. Relationship between the sisters, between the family and Jesus, and the relationship of Jesus to us and what we mean to him. Jesus' response to his dear friend being sick is a little bit surprising, don't you think? But it's the same response he has to the blind man. God may shine through his sickness or through the blindness. And then shocking. Something happens that's shocking. Jesus waits. He gets the message and he waits. He doesn't go right away. He doesn't hop on a plane or a bus or get in the metro and get there quickly. He waits. Jesus, you see, is looking at the bigger picture that the disciples and the sisters can't see. The bigger picture. I remember once quite a while ago being offered a job in Florida. It was a good job. I would have been an associate pastor. And the head pastor, he seemed like a person I really enjoyed working with. It was a great spot in Florida, nice beaches, close to family. But the bigger picture showed several things that bothered me. There wasn't any growth potential for me at all. And the congregation was asking me to do a job and not be compensated for it properly. And they knew it, and they said it outright. I'm a hard worker. The way they said it was hard to swallow. Sometimes looking at the big picture was really difficult. Now the location and the type of job and the working environment, they were calling to me. Even the people there that interviewed me, they were calling to me. And I wanted to hop on a plane and go to the church for the in-person visit that they wanted. Because meeting people face to face is really important to me. Now in the text it says that Jesus stayed put. He didn't go to his friends right away. This text and what's happened here is a bit of a mystery to us. Jesus says that Lazarus had fallen asleep. Now, in the ancient world, there's the verb for falling asleep means two things. It can mean falling asleep 
or it can mean dead. And so the fact that Lazarus, they say in the text that he was dead for four days, is really important to the use of the verb here. It shows us something. That verb doesn't mean a sound sleep. It means dead. Now looking at the bigger picture, let's look at Bethany, where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are. It's close to Jerusalem. And they say that in the text. Why is it important? Why does the author mention it? Because this is where Jesus is headed to die. And it's not very far from Bethany. It's prophetic knowledge. And when Jesus arrives in Bethany, the house is full of mourners, which would be really unusual in a very small town like Bethany. But why then is the house full of mourners? It's because Bethany lies close to Jerusalem. Lots of people, relatives probably lived there and had trades there. You see, in the ancient world of the Jews, you bury your dead in the first day, day one. Then you sit Shiva. Okay, how many of you know what Shiva is? Wave your hand or send a heart up if you know what Shiva is. Let's see, a few of you. Shiva is the Hebrew word for seven. Sitting Shiva means seven days of mourning. People sit with the mourners and they bring them food and they cry with them, right? The family stays home and others come to their house. They come to them. But Jesus, he doesn't go to the house. And this breaks all the rules. Did you notice that Mary and Martha come to Jesus? They come to him. He doesn't go to them. Again, in the ancient world, to meet someone on the path as they are approaching is an act of honoring someone. They were both honoring their Lord and friend by meeting him a ways away and bringing him in. He's like a king. Remember the prodigal son story? Father runs out to meet the son. And then what does he do? Remember what he does? He prepares a fatted calf. He prepares a feast for a king. Now, when Jesus finally sees the tomb, he's deeply moved in spirit and is very troubled. Yes, I would imagine that he was very troubled. Jesus, fully divine, fully human, human like us. You see, my friends, anger and grief, they go hand in hand. Here we are in the midst of a crisis and have to be apart from one another. We have to mourn what we once knew, lament what's happening right now, and feel the pain of a separation. Look at what Jesus, through God the Father, did to Lazarus. He gave him new life, and in giving Lazarus new life, unfortunately, Jesus signed his own death warrant because he went public. My friends, we need to embrace the newness that God offers us through new life in him. We have to look for the glory of God through all things and in all things, because God is still offering us life right now as is. And it's far from perfect right now, isn't it? People are hurting, and people are angry. People are not agreeing on what the best protocol is for this awful virus, as is. People can't go out. Some are losing their jobs. Others are losing their businesses. We're kind of in a hurting mess, as is. Remember those refrigerators with dents, the bookcases with scratches, and the stuffies with the missing eyes? We are a people now who have to accept life as is. I was sitting outside a few mornings ago, putting up part of the bird feeder, and a neighbor walked by, keeping our appropriate, you know, six feet of distance. Her dog spotted me and ran up to me. He wanted to play so bad and to tumble and wrestle with me, and then to just be quiet with me and give me his belly for belly rubs. He just wanted simple love. Just like our, us humans, we want just simple love. For people like me, an extrovert who need physical touch, this isolation, it's been really hard. So I guess what we need to do, my friends, is to focus back on the simpler times. Someone said that to me just yesterday. Focus back on the simpler times and keep that with us always. So here's a question for you. Let's reflect on this. Here's your question. How have we in our lives been able to give and receive simple love recently in the last two weeks? Maybe a friend or a family member brings toilet paper to your house. That's a godsend, right? Maybe someone grocery shops for you. Someone cuts your lawn because you aren't able to. You call someone who you know is lonely. We are stuck in place as is. We are imperfect, fallible, often broken, and often feeling just a little bit overwhelmed at the moment, trying to do life in an as-is type environment. But my friends, God loves us continually 
and sacrifices for us because we are his, just as we are, as is. Lazarus was raised from the grave by the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for the bigger picture, to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, as is. By his grace, amen. And we're going to sing a song for you that you know as well, Grace Alone. Let's pray again, shall we?